Hi guys, what's poppin'? How you guys doing? Ever since I started my channel, one of the questions I have gotten a lot is how do you deal with mom guilt, okay? So today I'm here to come and just give you guys the whole gist about me and mom guilt. And you know, this video, I anticipate it might not be so pleasant to some people, but you know, the truth just has to be said. Mom guilt is the guilt that moms feel in regards to their children, because they feel like they are lacking in certain areas of their lives or the mothers are lacking in certain areas of the children's lives but basically it is the guilt that moms experience in relation to their kids there are several reasons why women experience mom guilt okay but in my case in particular do i experience mom guilt the answer to that question is and oh no maybe at some point before in my life maybe i used to feel mom guilt i'm not even sure if i used to i've not really thought about it to be honest i feel like one of the major causes of mom guilt for women is absence from their kids life that's like one of the major major causes of mom guilt because a lot of women actually crave to spend time with their kids a lot of women want to be there for their kids their milestones and all of that but a lot of mothers cannot be there 247 with their kids for several different reasons. It might be for health reasons, it might be because of your job, it might be because of your peculiar situation or one situation or the other. You might not be able to be there for your to, for your kids, you know, as much as you would like, and then you feel guilty about it. Another reason why many moms feel mom guilt is because of social media, okay, because of interacting with other people, because of interacting with other moms you hear things that other moms are doing for their kids and you're like am i a stone <laughs> why am i not doing this for my kids one thing is evident when it comes to mom guilt comparison is a very 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 big contributing factor to mom guilt okay we as human beings we like to compare we as human beings we like to see the grass on the other side and see what's happening in the neighbor's house and you know compare to what's happening with us it is a natural human you know instinct i think it's not essentially a good or a bad thing, but it can be a bad thing depending on how you compare. Okay, so comparison is one of the biggest reasons why many women experience mom guilt. Because, for instance, you're watching me now and I put out a video yesterday, which is part of why I wanted to make this video. I put out a video yesterday and I saw people talking about, oh, because I did pedicure for my kids at home. I saw people saying things like, oh, you're very intentional about your kids. I get it a lot on many of my videos. You're very intentional about your kids. You're very hands-on. You're very this, you're very that. I really admire you. You make motherhood seem so easy. While that is true, one thing many of you keep forgetting is that when I am not being there for my kids, I am not carrying the camera to show you that I am not being there for my kids, okay? Um, but let me not say this so people will think that, oh, uh, people are not there for their kids. They just pretend, you know, what? not like I'm pretending, okay, but I'm not with my kids 247. I am not doing things for my kids 247. I mean, what am I even saying? You guys have seen me travel without my kids. You've seen me do things without my kids, go out, spend time by myself without my kids. So I would not even say that I'm not showing you guys. I'm actually showing you guys when I'm not with my kids. But at the same time, yeah, when... I am not in the mood or when I'm angry with my kids or when I'm just like, you know what, I don't care about it, what's happening in this house, which is rarely do. But when I am in that situation, I do not carry my camera and start showing you guys because I'm not even in the mood for anything at that point, okay? Another thing that many people forget is that your situation and my situation might not be the same thing, okay? In a lot of cases, women who are working cannot do some of the things that I do for my kids because they just can't, like... They have jobs to go to and having jobs to go to is doesn't make you a bad person or it's not a bad thing it is just reality of life is the reality of your situation and you are doing your best for your kids to provide for your kids to provide for your family you you have a job you have a nine to five you have to go to work you have to work on the weekends you have to, night shift whatever you can't do some of the things that I do. You cannot spend how many hours doing your kids' hair. You cannot spend how many hours playing with your kids. You cannot spend how many hours doing pedicure for your kids because you just don't have that time, okay? And it is okay not to have that time, okay? It's okay to outsource these things and give them to other people to do. Um, be mindful of that as well, that your situation and my situation are not the same, okay? Even though, yes, I work from home, I have a job, which is YouTube, it is not the same with most people or many people because... My own is that I am my boss, I am my secretary, I am my HR, I am my <laughs> everything. So I dictate when I can do what, okay? Even though 
somehow external factors also dictate for me okay so if i if i have a job right now if i have like a sponsorship video to make or i need to make money this month i'm going to work more than normal and i'm not going to give my kids as much attention as i normally would and that's okay as well okay so i feel like women should just just do what is best for your own situation don't look at other people's situation and judge okay don't look at what I'm, look at what you are doing for your own kids. You might see me making my kids hair, which is good. I don't do assignments with my kids. I don't. I can play with them. I can do play um, projects, you know, I can do art projects with them. But you see that normal sitting down doing assignments day to day? I, I can't. I don't like it, okay? So I have, a, my teachers have a, my children have a lesson teacher who comes and does assignments with them. I don't feel guilty about it. Where I can do my best for my kids, I do my best for them. Where I can't, I don't. It's, it's not, uh, like, there's no shame in it, okay? So you might be kind of parent that every time you come back from work, next thing you've had your bags, you've brought your kids, you've done assignments with them, you know, you've checked their bags, you've checked, you've done all those things with them. It is something, okay? I don't necessarily do that for my own kids, and it is okay. So look at your, your peculiar situation and do what is best for your kids. So the reason a lot of women experience mom guilt is because they have to up and leave okay and that is why i always advise women that if you can help it then you don't have to okay i need to always add that disclaimer that especially when your kids are young if you can help you know maybe taking a few years off work or not working at all or you know taking leave and all of that to spend time with your kids then do it for me i would rather spend time with my kids than deal with mom guilt about not spending time with my kids okay i might not have as much money as i should i might not have as much like something has to give okay something has to give so if you know that this mom guilt is eating at you so much you can't you can't focus at work you are miserable all the time you are not happy you are sad don't even like your job like that it's just because i'm doing it for the money if in a situation and you have a partner who can help out for a few years while you stay and raise your kids then please do it okay because something must give a lot of women choose to be stay at home moms because they know that you know it's 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 what's best for them mentally emotionally spiritually okay so it's okay now another angle that many people don't talk about or even think about is the fact that a lot of women are experiencing mom guilt because they are actually doing their husband's jobs okay you are actually doing your a, the job of a father in your child's life, you're not actually focused on being a mom. You are focused on doing both, being both dad and mom to your child. So in some cases, they can't help it. Like if you're a single mom, if your you know your husband is late or you don't have a husband or whatever the case may be, if you're raising your child alone, you can't help it. You don't have a choice, right? So I can't really blame such women. And in fact, I I just. I just feel bad for them. I wish that they could actually get somebody that could help. Either you remarry or you get a boyfriend that is good. That one's very difficult, Sha. Or you get family members that can help out, you know, men that can actually step in and play that father figure, you know, to your kids, okay? So, a lot of women experience mom guilt because a lot of women don't have men in their lives to ease off some of the things that, you know, women are doing that they shouldn't be doing so that they can focus on their kids, okay? Um, but for some of you that actually have your husbands with you, a lot of women are making excuses for grown men, you know, who are supposed to actually take up that mantle of being fathers. You are making excuses for him. Have you ever heard of dad guilt? There's nothing like dad guilt. Okay, because women are taking on the guilt from the dads. Okay, you are taking on, you have, you are, you are guilty for another person. I don't even know how to explain what I want to say. <laughs> you are feeling guilty for another person. Okay, it makes no sense whatsoever. Hold your husbands accountable. Hold your husbands accountable. For instance, I don't do something with my kids, but when, because lesson teacher is not every day, when lesson teacher is not around, my husband does assignments with them. Sometimes even when she's around, he does their assignments with them, okay? And I don't come and say, oh, don't worry, you've worked so hard, so just rest, let me do the assignments for them. Mba. No, 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 no. You are a father, you should do the job of a father. Okay, there's, there's some certain things that I don't even remind my husband of. I don't even remind him. Like, don't do it now. Don't be a picking. Don't do them now. But a lot of women will be like, you know how men are. He will not do it. So let me just do it. And then that's why he will continue to be like that. That is why he will come. I don't know why I'm raising my voice at this point. But that's just, just it. Your husband will continue to be deadbeat. Your husband, your partners will continue to be unavailable, to be deadbeat. 
if you allow them, if you give them the chance, if you take up the jobs they're supposed to do for them, okay? And it's not because these are, I mean, there are men who are bad men. Those ones, we know about them, okay? So that one, you don't enter one chance, but you say you don't enter one chance. We can't do anything about it, okay? But there are men who are not bad men. They're just normal, good, good, okay men. But they were not taught to do certain things and they don't think it is important to do them. And even though you know it is important for them to do, you are making excuses for them and you are doing it for them because he's a good man. No, 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 no. My husband is a good man, but if he, when it comes to things he's supposed to do, I know they chook him out. I know they even try. I can, if I see that, you know, he's struggling with it or he has something else he has to do or, you know, whatever the case may be, like he, for some reason he can't do it and I will do it for him. But if the reason he cannot do it is because he doesn't think it's important, because he's not there, he was not, he was not taught how to, sorry for you, you, are, you, you go learn them. Nobody taught you how to have sex, but you are now an expert at it. You go learn them, okay? That's the way, you know, women should actually treat their husbands. And I'm saying this thing with all honesty. Treat your husbands like the grown men that they are. When they are at work, are you there to, to remind them to, to submit their deliverables? Are you there to remind them to do their jobs properly? Are you there to, to do some of their jobs for them so that they will not, you know, they won't get sacked? You're not there to do that, do that for them. So why is it that when these men are at home, especially when it comes to taking care of the kids, you are making excuses for him. You are doing some things for him. Meanwhile, he's not doing anything. That reminds me, I saw a video somewhere and the things the lady said in that video, I was just like spot on, like it's almost as if the lady used to read my mind, okay, or she knows my situation. She was saying that she does not remind her husband for school runs. Like she doesn't wake him up to say, oh, it's time for school runs, can't take your kids to school. No, she won't remind him. She doesn't remind her husband for school runs. She doesn't remind him for appointments, you know, certain appointments I supposed to take the kids for. She doesn't remind him. And that's how I how I am as well. I don't I don't think I've ever reminded my husband, oh, it's time to go and pick the kids. Though. Because essentially what you do by constantly reminding them is that you make them dependent on you. It's almost like you remove that part of their brain that reminds them them like how do I put it? They now outsource that part of their brain to you. You're not their brain thinking for them. You're not their, their body that is waking them up. Instead of their body to wake them up naturally, it is now you that is waking them up to go and take their kids to school. Okay, so I don't think I've ever reminded my husband. The only thing I can remind my husband of is, oh, help me. I was supposed to pick my friend's kids today. So please go and pick my friend's kids. Too. But I'll remind my husband that ah, it's almost two o'clock. Go and pick the kids. Never. Like. <laughs> For what? Don't don't go and pick them now. No, 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 no. Stay at home. Two of us will be at home looking at ourselves like this. We will be there looking at ourselves like this. Let us let us know who would, you know, misbehave. Because when it comes to my own part, I do my parts very well. And that's another thing I need to point out to women, okay? Let us tell ourselves the truth, okay? A lot of women are not doing what they are supposed to do. So they feel guilty about it. That's just the truth. Let's stop beating around the bush. There are other reasons why you can feel mom guilt, which are beyond your control. But the one that you can control, my dear sister, control it. I always say that. That thing that you can control, control it. The one that you cannot control, then leave it. Let it be, okay? Focus on the one that you can control. The one that you cannot control, leave it for God. Okay, so let us not even lie. A lot of women these days are feeling mom guilt because they know in their heart of hearts that they're not doing that. They're not doing all they're supposed to do for their kids. Okay, that's one thing that me and, me and the Lord always talk about all the time. That we don't feel guilty because we they try. <laughs> When it comes to our kids, we they try and we know that we they try. We accept that we they try and we just live with it and live with ourselves with it, okay? Now, are there places where we fall short? Are there places where, you know, I might not be doing the right thing for my kids? Yes, but when I find out that I'm, when I find those places, when I discover those things, I change. But some women, you know you're not doing right by your kids, you know you're doing the wrong thing, but you're like, eh, you know, you, you're making excuses for yourself, you're making excuses for everybody around you. So why are you now telling me that you're feeling mom guilt? Okay, so I know some people will still misconstrue this part of the video, but I don't really care, okay, because that's the truth. Let us stop pretending and say all of us are A1 mothers. Some of us are not doing the things that we're supposed to do. We are not. So when we are now talking about mom guilt, you know in your heart of hearts that the reason why you're feeling guilt is because you're not doing what you're supposed to do because and you can do it. Okay, so some women outsource everything to house help. Your house help is actually the mother in your home and you know it. That's why you feel guilty. You know it. Yeah, instead you are pressing phone, you are hanging out with friends, you are doing other things, you are not doing what you are supposed to do. You, we know these things, so let us stop pretending. There are mothers that are not doing the right thing. People always make it look as if because you are a mother, you are automatically this, you are automatically an angel that is doing right by her kids. It's not true. There are women that go and throw their kids inside those bin. Let us know. Let us know that and no peace. There are women who torture their kids to death. 
okay? So, don't make it look as if because somebody is a mother, the person is automatically perfect. No, you're not perfect. Okay, so a lot of women, me included, I know times that I have been deadbeat. <laughs> not deadbeat anyway, but I know times that I have been lacking and when I realize that I have been lacking, I try. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect though. I still make mistakes sometimes. I try to, to correct those things and I'm at peace with myself. Yeah, so if you as a mom, you know, and now, I'm not saying that you don't have the right to be tired or you don't have the right to, you know, need a break. I mean, we all, we are all human beings. Every, everybody has that breaking point when they need a break, when they are tired, when they can't do it anymore. That's okay, okay? But when you know that you are not at that breaking point, when you know that you have the energy and the time, then make use of this wisely, okay? If you make use of it wisely, you will not be feeling guilty afterwards because you know that you did your best for your child. But many of you know in your heart that you're not doing the best for your children and that is why you can excuse your husbands from not doing the best for, their, for, for your children because you know that you, self, you don't have any moral ground, you don't have any moral backing to be able to, you know, hold your husband accountable. In my own case, the one way I suppose to do for my kids, I do it to the fullest so that when I'm telling you... <laughs> You cannot come and argue. You can't. You can't come and say, hey, "But you call you don't." No, 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 no. You know. You said you know. You said you know that I did try. You know in your heart that I, that I try. Okay. So if you are a mom and you are trying very hard for your kids, then you have every right to demand the same for your husband. From your husband, you have every right. Stop allowing men to get away with nonsense all in the name of, "Hey, he's a man. He's not. Really, you know how men are. You know we women. We were raised. Nobody was raised to 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 know how to take care of kids. Nobody. Don't forget that now. We were raised. There's a different okay maybe some people were raised in that aspect somehow yes there's a difference between raising another person's children and raising your own kids there is a huge difference you see that emotional attachment that bond that you have with your own child it is a very 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 strong um, um determining factor in how you raise your kids and how the impact of the way you raise your kids affects you I don't know if I'm making sense because at this point, I'm, my head is, is, is hot. <laughs> okay, let me give this example, okay? So, for instance, if I was a help, or let me use my help as, a, as an example. I have helps and they take care of my kids very well. Beautiful girls, they are very, very good. They're very hands-on. I love them, okay? They are very, they are very, very good with my kids, okay? I can't even deny that. So, it's another reason why I don't feel mom guilt because I have capable hands that are helping me to do some things that... I find mundane so that I can actually focus on helping my kids and you know being there for my kids okay so for instance I don't wash plates so the time I'm supposed to use I'm washing plates I'll be with my kids I don't iron their clothes I don't wash their clothes I don't do those things so if you can get help then get help okay so when I some people that'll be saying things like oh I don't know why people have help abroad we don't have any help sorry your loss it is your loss it's not the flex you think it is it is you that is losing just own it. Like, ah, man, I wish I had help. Own it and forget and move on. Don't come and try to shame other women for having help. What was this I was giving again? Uh -huh. So yeah, I have help. And I have helps who are, who are good, right? But I can categorically tell you that when they now raise their own kids, there will still be a difference. They will now understand the impact of some of the things that they don't understand now. It's different from... It's different when you are just taking care of another person's child. When it is your own child, eh? And you are now a parent. They now depend on you for every freaking thing in this life. Spiritually, I always have to add spiritually, mentally, emotionally, you know, before physically. Because most people always think about parenting as, oh, like, I, I, put a, I put up a post yesterday about people who said that being a dog mom is more difficult than having actual children. And I'm like, are you mad? Are you okay? Is something, something wrong with your head? Carry your child and go and put inside a cage outside. Let us see what will happen now. I want to see something. Carry your child eh, and give your child any half food on the floor. Let us see. So, let us not even get it twisted. Raising kids is emotionally, spiritually, mentally draining. They depend on you, they depend on you for all those things. Okay? Spiritual growth, mental growth, emotional growth, physical growth, uh, uh, social growth. Okay? They depend on you for every freaking thing you are. And mind you, many of us are not even equipped for it. So, when you have children depending on you for every freaking thing in this life, that is when you know that parenting is not easy. And we were not all equipped for this, but we're now equipping ourselves for this. So, there is no excuse why your husband cannot equip himself for the same thing. Uh, there are many times that 
my kids will come. He, my phone's around though. He's in the house. He's in the, he's in his office. You know, enjoying his life. Well, maybe not enjoying his life. Maybe he's working, but he's in his office. He's around. He's in the house, right? I mean, his home office. My kids will not come. Mommy, mommy. Eh, Sophia said this. Eh, Sophia will not come. Mommy, mommy. Eh, Eva this. I'll be like, eh, 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 eh. All of you, all of you, all of you. Eh, eh, eh. Hold it there, hold it there. All of you like this. Carry yourself, eh. The way three of you came. Carry yourself like this and go and meet your father. Go and complain to your father. Okay. I don't care what he's even doing at that time. They should go and complain to him. Let him leave what he's doing and listen to their complaint and solve the situation. Okay. I won't say, oh, because I'm a mother. Every complaint in this life, I should be the one. I'm a human being. You want me to? You want me to break down? You want me to die because I have children? So at the end of the day, I don't know. I'm angry about this thing. At the end of the day, <laughs> there are a lot of guilt that you're feeling. That is not your guilt to feel. It is not your guilt to feel. Okay, if your children are not progressing well in school or something is happening with their education, it is not only you that gave birth to them. You, they have a father. So why is it that you are not making look as if oh, I say, mom, I'm not really trying for my child. I need to try harder for my child. So my child can pass. What is the father doing in that situation? What is the father doing to contribute to that situation? You know. So these are the things that women should actually wake up. Wake up to the fact that you are feeling guilt that is not your own. You are collecting blame that is not your own. I know the collect blame will not be my own. No, I know the collector. Hmm. Hey, people don't know me. I know they collect blame when it'll be my own. There are, certain, there are certain things that my children will do. I'll be like, you, this is your behavior. Now, I'm very sure it was your father that you got this from. <laughs> I say it all the time. I said to my husband that I know I was a perfect child, okay? I was perfect. I wasn't a crybaby. This child that is crying now, now you in collect that from. You know, it's a joke. I mean, we'll laugh about it. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to use this title to let you know that I'm not here to collect any blame. Or the one that I know that is my own. A color that behaves like me in certain aspects, I agree. Okay, but if that behaves like you, you have to agree to <laughs> And even Cora, the things that Cora does that, you know, is similar to you, we go agree. Then there's some things that Cora does that is neither me nor my husband. It's my mom. I used to blame my mom for that one. But why are you collecting blame when it will be your own? Why are, you, why are you admitting guilt to things that are not your fault or things that you shouldn't be admitting guilt for? Many of us women never knew how to take care of kids until we had our own kids. Okay, so the fact that, oh, he never stayed where he did, he, he, he was not, eh, eh, he should learn it. He should learn it. He's, his first job, had he, had, had he done his first job before, that, that's his first job or his first business that he did. Had he done it before as a child? No, but he learned on the job. So let him learn on the job and let him do his own part. And then you do your own part and then you are both good. Nobody's asking men about, oh, do you feel guilty leaving your children and going to work? So why should I feel guilty doing the same thing if I want to do it? Why should I feel guilty? If I have to leave my children and go to work, you best believe that my husband will have to do a lot more. <laughs> he will have to do a lot more. If you have a husband or a partner who can be there for your child, allow them to be there for their children, okay? Allow men to be men. Allow fathers to be fathers in their children's lives. Children need both fathers and mothers to have a balanced, well-rounded life, okay? Let us stop that bullshit of, oh, yeah, all women were raised by single mothers. A lot of people were raised by single mothers and they did not die. Of course, they will not die. They put their raised on the streets by nobody. They did not die. They will survive. But these children and these people have deep cuts that, you know, they wish they can, they did not have, okay? So if you can help it, then help it. So don't come and give me that bullshit story of, I, I've, had a, I've had this argument several times with several different people. Story for another day where um, you say things like, I, I don't need a man to have a child. I'll just go and get pregnant. Not. I can take care of my children by myself. I, I have money. I'm like, you think it's only about money? Go and watch paternity court and see how many children are there. It's not even that it was the men that brought the wives to, to prove that the child is their own or not. Though. No, it is children that are looking for their fathers and trying to prove that I am your child because I need you in my life. Even men have rejected the children to their faces. Even men are not interested in the children. You will see these children still trying to get these men to, you know, to be involved in their lives because they need their father. They miss their father. They wish they had a father. Many girls are having daddy issues now because they don't have fathers or they have fathers that are not, you know, present. They're not doing the thing they're supposed to do. Many girls have daddy issues. Many boys have daddy issues as well. But we won't talk about it because we don't recognize it as daddy issues. A lot of men have daddy issues as well. If you see children that don't have fathers, you will hear them say several times that they wish they had their fathers. Even people that they lost their fathers, they wish they had their fathers. So... God is not stupid. He know why he knows why he did not make it a sexual reproduction that for you to have a child you just you know do something to yourself and then you have a child. No, he knows why he made it two people to, to bring forth a child. He knows why. So don't dismiss a, an entire a, 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 a gender of people because you think that you have money. You think it's about money, and you think money is everything. Money is not everything, okay? There's so many things that children will need in their lives and they wish they had. And why do you want to have a child that forever there's a hole in that child's heart? 
wondering, hoping, wishing. Why? Why don't you do that to your child with open eye? Again, I'm going to say this here. There are situations that you cannot control where for some reason, you know, maybe you, you lost your husband or, the, you know, the father of the children ran away from you or whatever. There's many reasons why many men can become single mothers, okay? I am saying that those are unfortunate situations, so do not open your eyes and put it on your child. Like, let it happen to you. Let it not be that you, you carry your hand and went to do those things. It's like you carrying your hand and going killing the father of your children and they're now saying that, you know, oh, whatever. Like, no, don't open your eye and, you know, do this to your child. If it happens to you, unfortunately, it's sad, it's unfortunate, but, you know, you, we move. But if it's that you opened your eyes, you with clear eye, you went and put yourself in that situation. You know that this man does not like you. You know that this man has a wife and children somewhere. You go and intentionally get pregnant for the man. There's something wrong with your head. It means that you don't even like your kids. You don't like your child. You, you don't know that as much as you are choosing a husband for yourself, you're actually choosing a father for your kids. You're actually choosing a father for your kids. So don't say, oh, he's such a good husband, but he's a rotten father, and you still go there. You meet a man, and he has kids, and he's not there for his kids, but you too, you're still getting pregnant for him. You hear things like, oh, Davido is such a good father, he's there for his kids. How? How is he a good father when he has kids in different continents? How? How? Don't, let's stop deceiving ourselves. How is that a good father when you cannot even be disciplined enough to have your kids in one place, in one home, under one mother? You don't have that discipline enough. They tell him he's a good father because he comes for Haley's birthday this month. The next month, he carries him a day for a, a, a concert. The next tomorrow, he carries his son for this one. Then you'll now come and say, oh, he's such a good father. What is your, what is your criteria for good father? Some of you, your threshold or expectation of what a good father is, uh, is, is the lowest of the low. Like, barest minimum is what people consider I'm like oh my god such a good father barest minimum you are giving these men you are you are stroking their ego for barest minimum a man is is there sending money to the kids you say he's such a good father because he's sending money to the kids he's he's not see there's some ngos you go to they will give you money for your kids okay so there is it's nothing that he's doing that is very special there are people that are actually taking care of other people's kids they're not paying school for other people's kids there's nothing special that you're doing there that your father that the husband is doing that you, the father is doing there so don't think that because the man has to bring money for the kids and he's now such an amazing father you can't bring money for your own kids can't you bring money for your own kids? So let us always consider the other aspects. Spiritually, is it there for them? Is it teaching them in the way of the Lord? Is it raising them in the way of the Lord? Is it teaching them the principles of the Lord? Is it teaching them, you know, how to be good human beings, decent human beings? Is it there to teach them? No matter how good of a mother you are, there are some things that you cannot experience because you are a woman. And you cannot pass those experiences down to your kids because you are a woman. That's just the truth. You are always going to see things from the perspective of a woman. No matter how masculine you are, no matter how strong you are as a woman, you are always going to see things from the perspective of a woman. So you need the perspective of a man to be able to balance things out. Okay? I always say that if I was a single mom, hey, my kids would not suffer. My kids would be very, very soft. <laughs> no matter how you want to it. The man's input is very, very important. Is he concerned about their education? Is he teaching them things about life? Is he exposing them to ideas? Is he exposing them to situations that helps build their character? Is he? No, he's not. Is he showing them love? Is he showing you love that your children can learn from for themselves and for the future or how their spouses should show them love? Is he doing that? No, he's not. But because he sends, sends money, Father of the Year award. Also, if I even see any video about parenting or stuff like that, where the you know parenting hack, parenting this and that, I send it to my husband. Though, as they as they learn, make you they learn too. Okay, as they learn them, make you they learn them. Okay, and you know he appreciates those things as well. So there's nothing like oh he's a man. He does, no, no, nothing like that in my book. So the the things he cannot do, like he cannot breastfeed, he cannot you know do some certain things. Then hey, I'm not holding him for those ones. But the ones that he can do, or God do them to the max, pro max safe big anyway let me know what you guys think about this topic let me know your thoughts in the comment section and i'll see you all in my next video bye i feel like i was just ranting i don't even know what's wrong with myself <laughs>